reports that the case files of Sunday Ibuho's aides who are standing trial are missing. Counsel to the DSS says the files were stolen by robbers. The price of uh, cooking gas increases across Nigeria with the NNPC blaming it on undersupply. But experts worry that Nigeria flares too much gas to be importing the same commodity. And we have a conversation with a former Lagos State Commissioner for Fiscal Planning and Urban Development. He'll be talking about the government's plans for residents. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a very beautiful morning today, um, Thursday the 9th of September 2021. Thank you very much for joining us on The Breakfast. I am Annetta Felix. Good morning and thanks for joining us and uh, welcome to a Thursday morning's edition of The Breakfast. I am Musaogi Ogbomwa. Good morning. So, a friend of mine who's based in Abuja and runs a radio show um, has a segment he calls, You Can't Make This Stuff Up. And our next top trending story really portrays, you know, this particular theme of this radio show. And it is that armed robbers in the Federal Capital Territory have robbed the most feared security agency in Nigeria and stolen case files belonging to Sunday Buhu's aides. Now, um, here's a backstory. July 1st, 2021. Right. Operatives of the Department of State Services went ahead to the house of Sunday Iboho to arrest, to raid the house, first of all. They raided the place. They arrested 12 of their aides, and they've been in, in DSS custody ever since. Now, these aides have filed a fundamental rights suit against the DSS, um, seeking 100 million naira in damages, saying that they had been detained for more than 48 hours without a court order or a court judgment and the immediate trial, immediate parade, and that that all was a breach of their fundamental human rights. And the whole case went to trial, and... Um, there was a hearing yesterday, Wednesday, um, September the 8th. And what happened was um, during the court session, Barrister Awo, the counsel for the Department of State Services, DSS, told Justice Obiora Egwatu on Wednesday that his colleague, who was conveying the document to the court, boarded a vehicle that was hijacked by some one-chance criminals who carted away the file and other personal items. Now, the DSS Council has now ap applied for an adjournment of the hearing. Now, um, reacting to this, Pelumi Olajengbesi, one of um, Igboho's lawyers, he went on Facebook on a rant saying, this claim by the DSS is shameful and ridiculous, and that if the DSS can be robbed in the city of Abuja, what then is the fate of the common man? So, questions, questions really for me is, first of all, Osawagi, I want to believe that the Department of State Services have official vehicles that they use to carry out official assignments. And it makes me ask questions regarding the validity of the claim that they had boarded a public transportation, which coincidentally happened to be a one chance vehicle that was attacked by robbers or belonging to some robbers who then did not steal their phones, did not steal other possessions, did not kidnap them, did not hurt them, but specifically went for case files in the possession of a DSS official. And secondly, the question I, I open with really, how can armed robbers rob the most feared or one of the most feared security agencies in the country? <laughs> I was uh, hoping that I could talk about this without laughing because it's actually hilarious. Um, but yeah, you know, the, the fact that, you know, he works with the DSS, doesn't have DSS written on his forehead. So, you know, robbers don't necessarily, you know, pick and choose, oh, this one is a doctor, this one is a lawyer, this oh, one really? is DSS official, yeah. Um, it doesn't make it less um, uh, ridiculous. Um, and I think that word doesn't even describe exactly what this story is like. I think it's an insult to that judge. So you think armed robbers um, just target papers? They just look for no. They, they loads might have taken they, if this is true. Or you think which, that's if this is true, which, which I which I highly doubt. Um, they there's not. He doesn't say that they didn't take his phone. It says that the file was taken. So he might have taken. They might have taken it with every other thing. Um, once again, I think this is an insult to that judge. Um, that you would boldly and stand in court and tell that kind of story that 
you know, your DSS official who was going home, was he taking the files home to give assignment to his children? He said he, said he was conveying the con files, not even where? going to convey... So, I mean, what, what, is, what is a DSS official doing with uh, court papers on his way home or on, on his way they to the market? They didn't say on his way home. Where, where, so where was he going? Um, um, so, once again, I think it's an insult, you know, to that judge. Um, and, um, um, oh, apparently he's a lawyer, the DSS lawyer, not, not uh, this official. Um, it's, once again, an insult to that judge. Um, it also says a lot about the processes with which we carry out, um, you know, uh, uh, justice in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. There's no um, electronic processes, you know, because some of all these things should have been put on a database. They should scanned have been, they should uploaded. have been scanned exactly and uplo uploaded um, on a file, uh, put on the computers. Um, what are we still using paper? You know, because eventually, you know, those papers end up with people who fry Akara at the roadside. And when you buy Akara, you see some court, you know, papers <laughs> that belong to people from, you know, 1992 or, or 2005. <laughs> Um, so or 2021 it, 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 yeah. even. But it, it's an insult. You know, another thing is, why I think this is completely ridiculous and it's an insult to that judge is because these are some of the things that we've continued to do to stall cases, to delay trials. And for a long time, we've talked about, you know, how the criminal justice system and the whole of the, you know, judiciary is, you know, almost a clog in the wheel of justice because of cases that take five, ten years and, you know, never really just, you know, come to light. Um, and these are some of the reasons, aside the fact that, yes, the justice system, the lawyers, all of them, prosecution um, and uh, defense, they all have their own challenges. These are some of the reasons. And the DSS is brazenly insulting that judge by telling that kind of story that one chance, you know, he entered one chance and they took I've seen tweets the, by Nigerians the, saying, if you want to lie, lie properly. It, so you can understand where they're coming from when they believe that this story is untrue. No, I, I, it, probably, it probably is, you know, whatever they could think about that morning. Like, let, let's use this, you know, story. It, it might work. But it's an insult that you couldn't even think of a better lie, if this is false, <laughs> that you couldn't even think of a better lie, you know, to tell that judge. And, of course, now the case has been adjourned. Um... The, the people in question, you know, who are being, who are on trial here, um, apparently one of them is uh, a woman who had filmed, I believe she's one of the people here, who had filmed the, or who had streamed the um, invasion of Igbo's residents live on Facebook, I believe she's one of those people who wasn't, wasn't released. They have been charged with uh, terrorism. terrorism charges and some of all of that. It is completely mind-blowing to see these things play out and see how the DSS has, re has reduced itself to this level. And it, it's embarrassing. And, and I don't know, and one of the things that I will continue to say is I don't know how some people really do not have any shame, you know, mm -hmm. when they carry out some of all these things. So I want to give them the benefit of doubt that it actually is true. But even if it is, they should be ashamed of themselves that that is what happened to the case files of, of one of the most critical cases currently going on in Nigeria. It is embarrassing to the person, and it's an insult to that judge who had to listen to that story um, and eventually, you know, very likely uh, adjourn the case to further notice. It's also an embarrassment to the DSS that that is the process through which they move around with court documents inside public buses um, or inside Keke uh, in, in Abuja. It's a shame. Hmm. So... If you say that's a shame, how then would you describe what seems to be like campaigns in Nigeria? Talking about our next option in the story. And it's been described as a theatrical display. You know, politicians campaigning for votes ahead of elections. And this is um, former um, a CBN uh, governor, um, Soludo. He has gone to the markets. The pictures will be on your screen in a second. He has gone to the market to speak with the market women, people, traders, and he has been prizing stockfish, pepe, you know, foodstuffs, food items. And that's to be seen, like most people would describe it as, you know, close to the people, you're close to the grassroots. And Nigerians, if you follow what's been said on social media, say they're not buying it this time. They're used to this format. They're used to this template of when it's close to elections, get ready to see a politician in the market, doing market runs with you um, on your next trip there. And, and that's it there. He's conversing with people saying, Pop, is, that, is that garden eggs? Looks like garden eggs there. And uh, he's been pointing at those market items, you know, shopping, shopping publicly. And people ask questions. Does he do market runs every weekend by himself? Or was that just for clout? 
We spoke about this yesterday, clout chasing on the social media. And really, it's what people have been saying. Others have described this as laughable as well. You know, photos of the governorship candidate of ABGA, you know, um, Professor Charles Sududu, an ex governor, uh, buying food items at the popular Onicha main market. That really is what it is, Sergei. Yeah, uh, well... Uh, for this, uh, he's, um, I believe, the APGA candidate for the November 6 elections. Um, and um, this was also shared on Soludo TV. Apparently, there's a media, a little media, social media house called Soludo TV, uh, where this was shared. So I, I, I read through some of the critics, you know, and um, obviously, this is not the first time that we're seeing things like this. There's still pictures of uh, Adam Sushimala eating corn um, on the internet. There's pictures of uh, Ayodele Fayashi eating Amala. You know, there is... Different politicians, um, different politicians. Plantain. Exactly. You know, there, there is always these things that happen. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak, uh, you know, different here. It might be criticized by a lot of people on social media who see this as just a charade, you know, and, you know, stereotype Nigerian politician. When it's time, close to elections, mm -hmm. you go down and start doing these things that, you know, none of these people will see you again after, for the next eight years after you win. Um, and that's what they always do. But I think it's, it's important that we realize that I think they have seen that these things work. A lot mm. of the people who criticize, you know, these acts, a lot of them who are on social media don't even vote. So you might see these things now and laugh and say, oh, you know, Nigerian politicians, so Ludo, shame on you and all of that. But a lot of these people don't actually vote. The people who vote, who very likely will be on it, you know, out for the elections, mm -hmm. are the people that they go to meet. So I think they understand that these things work. Mm. It might look, um, you know, shameful that you know these are the tactics that nigerian politicians have to use but it tells a story and it paints a picture of what nigerian politics grassroots politics really is it is not done on social media it is not done on television necessarily it is not done in any other place but in the grassroots so even if yes you know he, he goes out once or twice and buys corn today tomorrow he's buying uh, abacha the next day he's you know uh, you know buying okba as long as these things, they, they understand that these things work. Mm -hmm. And you can look at the faces of those women in some of those pictures. They are excited to finally see Chao Soludo. Um, is it Chukuma? Yeah, Chukuma Soludo. Um, Chukuma Chao. Yes, yeah, so both of them. <laughs> so they're excited to finally see him face to face. And if this is what you know, is required for them to maybe campaign, tell people around them that, you know, let's vote for him. He bought corn from me or he bought tabacha from me or he bought stockfish from me. Um, they understand that these things work. Um, grassroots politics is very, very important in Nigeria's political space, and a lot of times we ignore it because we are looking for a totally different narrative concerning our, our um, um, uh, leadership recruitment process. Mm -hmm. We want to see politics done better. We want to see campaigns that are carried out better. We want to hear campaign speeches and promises of, of you know, a person that knows what he wants to achieve mm -hmm. for the people. But a lot of these people don't have all those plans. So instead of going on stage to tell you about the economy of the state and how it's going to develop these roads and how it's going to build this infrastructure mm -hmm. and how it's going to you know, build more hospitals and some of all of that, they'd rather just do it the grassroots way by reaching out to some of these people that they know. Okay. Um, so my, my response to your train of thought is this. What's the motive for that grassroots way? What is your intention? What is, what is the motive for that grassroots way? Is that really what you intend? To, first of all, is that how you have been? Is that... Do you connect to the grassroots fundamentally has your political line have your political history been characterized been uh, been characterized by you know interaction with the grassroots or was that just a one day media campaign you know get your 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 your, your photographers to be on standby for when the women the women smile is, is that what it is so we need to know the motive here are you trying to play on our intelligence? Are you trying to make a fool out of us? Because we know that this is something that have that you, you, as you have said, have proven to work, right? So is that what this is? Or is this just a continuation of your person? Is this just a continuation of your desire for service? Is this just... These are things we need to begin to question, not you coming to... Um, um, you know, swing pictures in my face and think, oh, market women are happy and then I vote for you. Well, well um, I mean, we're, we're bigger than that. Well, Nigerians well, should demand better. Well, once again, you know, it obviously um, might seem like a scam. But once again, politicians have continued to do these things over time. Nigerian politicians. And the reason they do it is because it actually does work. Grassroots politics actually does work. You can see um, even local government chairmen 
House of Assembly members, councillors, every now and then will go to, you know, their small community, gather the youths there and buy them alcohol and buy them, you know, drinks. They might not see that person again for the next one year. But whenever he comes around, he has little bags of rice, onions that is given to women, given to the young boys in the society. That's what grassroots politics is, and that's what works for them. And that's, they take five people and that's from terrible. five families. Yes, so it again, is. That is terrible. <laughs> Re because you can't give me alcohol for me to get a hangover. Again. Excuse me. You can't give me alcohol <laughs> for me to get a hangover and say, oh, my chairman. And then my kids can't go to school because I can't afford paying the school fees. See, you see these guys around where our studio, I interact with them. People see me interact with them. These guys who smoke, who do all of this. And I, and I speak to them because I'm a journalist and I want to know their perspective. Some of them tell me me that their kids are at home because they can't afford 25,000 era school fees. But politicians will come around the beach and then give them money for alcohol. So how do you tell me that you exchange a bottle of drink for my child's future? It doesn't make sense at all. Okay? I think you're getting it wrong. I am not getting it <laughs> you're wrong. You're getting it wrong. People, so people should demand is... more from their government, demand more <laughs> accountability, demand more... I mean, government should do what government is meant to do and not bribe me with onions and akara so and say that so I should I, be good I for the think next four Once again, years. I think you're getting it wrong. Sorry, this, if you, if, if, you, if you say it is bribery, um, that is. means, listen, if you say it is bribery, it means that the elections are tomorrow and take this con or I'm buying a car for you, go and vote for me tomorrow. No, it's not. I, it have, is, I have recorded would you, would electoral you, malpractice would you please, on camera would you and relax. we've seen it on TV. So this is not bribery. This is what they describe as, in quote, grassroots politics. <laughs> And it is not necessarily because he's man. giving that person alcohol to go vote for him. He is showing them some level of connection. <laughs> he's, he's, he's putting himself in their place, so even if it's for connection. one day. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It is called grassroots politics. And once again, we want better. And I get it uh -huh. that Nigerians want better. But alcohol is better. No, let's, I, I just use alcohol <laughs> as an example. So Nigerians want better. And you want to see a better campaign. You want to see a better run campaign. The truth is, the road between where Soludo, you know, left his house and got to this market is bad. I'm sure that he had to go through very, very bad roads to get to this place to take these pictures. You want better. You want him to say better things. You want him to actually have a plan. That is fine. But how many people want who want history. these demands? Listen. How many people who want these demands that you're talking about mm -hmm. would go out to vote? How many people who want these demands that you are mentioning now? These you want to see him on stage like it's Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton I didn't campaigning. Tell you I, wanted to, no, I'm, I'm I just never saying. said that. I have repeatedly said what I want for see when Nigerians want to vote, look at history, look at antecedents. Where this politician that has just come up and he's buying you alcohol and he's giving you a bag of rice and he's telling you, Oh, I, I care about you. Look at his history, look at his antecedents. Where is he coming from? Has he does he have a track record? Of grassroots politics, does he have but a you, but, grass, but, but, does he have a track record of you know serving humanity and not even just coming that. out of the blue? You, that's why you. That's why we do our research. That's why, for example, we brought up um, what's his name, Kingsley Mogalu, the other day, and we questioned his history and we questioned you know his intentions. That's why we journalists have that duty to dig up that story and bring it to the fore for the people to see. My point once again is no matter how you paint it mm -hmm. and what you would rather have. The reason Nigerian politicians keep doing this it's is because, because they know that it works. We can agree on so that. So regardless of whether you, you want to see a, you know, a better structured campaign, you want to see that he has a history of being you know, close to the people and some of all of that, it it's, may not be very, very relevant to him at this point. He wants to take Anambra State. He wants to be governor of Anambra State. And for him to do that, he needs to connect with the people who would spread his message. He needs to connect with the people who would be able, who he knows will actually come out and vote. That, that, that's what it is. We, until we get to a place where we're 200 million people, until we get to that place where there is more youth population you know, among the uh, voters, there's more females, there's more 40-year-olds, you know, uh, 50-year-olds, year old bankers, doctors, mm -hmm. every sphere of, of life in Nigeria. Until we get to that place where those people actually come out on election day, and we see that our election figures, out of 200 million people, 80 million, 90 million are voting. Until we get there, they're going to continue using these same tactics which are wrong, and it's not me justifying it, it's wrong. But they have seen that these tactics work. So until we get to that place where me, you, everybody in this office knows that on election day, we don't necessarily have to be here on screen. We should go vote because we know how important it is. And we can get 100 million people, 100 million voters out there, people monitoring the elections, people sharing you know, videos from the elections, monitoring the transfer of results and all of that. They will continue to use these same tactics because... Look at the lines on election day. Who do you see there? 
How many doctors do you see there? How many bank MDs do you see I on the line the on election day? elections a few, a few so, weeks ago, and it was terrible. So, 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 and that's what I'm saying. So it is these same people, these same mama and her sons, it's grassroots politics. You really just need to sell yourself to them on their level. It's deceptive politics. What, regardless of what you call it, it works. <laughs> it's deceptive <laughs> politics because that's not your true character and that's just a charade. Um, we can take a break here on Top Trending. You can jump in the conversation on social media. We're at Plus TV Africa on all platforms. Um, stay with us. We'll be back to analyze the papers on Off the Press.